Today I'm going to introduce you to a new device that I recently came across and that is the Travelfy Journey XTR. Now if you're not already subscribed to my channel and you like all things RV and truck, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But like I was saying, I recently came across the Journey XTR. Now I actually heard about this device for the first time while watching a, a tour of a Brinkley RV and I think it was one of the founders, Nate, I believe was his name, who very quickly pointed out during the tour, a router with antennas sitting up on top of some cabinets uh, in the kitchen. And then he mentioned that their units would be coming standard from the factory with the Journey XTR 4G router and Wi-Fi repeater. And then I think it was a few days later that I was reading a, a press release about Riverstone RV this time. And they were announcing that they were going to begin sourcing the XTR and their units as well. And obviously those are two very respectable RV brands. So it got my attention because here my Jayco Pinnacle, it came with the WineGuard Connect 2.0, which is basically the Air 360 antenna on the roof. And then they call it a gateway. It's basically a router that goes inside your RV. You know, a lot of RVs come with this exact same setup from the factory. And I've been using the Wine Guard now for almost two years. And, you know, it works okay. I think my biggest complaint with the Wine Guard is the actual router itself, the portion that they call the gateway. You know, it's basically a mini computer, more or less. And uh, my opinion is that the Wine Guard router itself. Is underpowered meaning basically the the processor and the memory inside of it it turns it into a bottleneck more or less so my somewhat poor experience with the wine guard has always had me kind of on the lookout for something potentially better that could replace it and so when I heard about the the uh, journey XTR from Travelfy I was naturally very intrigued but I could not find any substantial reviews or demonstrations here on, on YouTube, you know, from actual people that have used the device. And so I reached out to Travelfy and they sent me this Journey XDR to test out. So I've been testing it for about two weeks now. And uh, spoiler alert, I gotta say this thing has, it's really impressed me. And let me tell you why. First is when it comes to the actual 4G connectivity on the device, you no longer need a physical SIM because the XTR has its own virtual SIM. And you know, with the WineGuard, I was basically carrying around a physical SIM card from Verizon, another one from AT&T, and another one from T-Mobile, so that no matter where I camp, I can always put in the SIM card that has the, the greatest uh, signal, right? And then on top of it, I'm keeping up with three separate data plans, prepaid data plans from each of the three carriers. And uh, you know, if you're an infrequent traveler like myself, you're not full-time in the RV, then you know when you try to reinstate a prepaid data plan and you've let it lapse, it's a, it's a real pain and really difficult to do. So what I like about the Travelfy is basically they're managing all that behind the scenes. And so not only do you not have to deal with three separate carriers or three separate accounts, uh, but basically you're just dealing with Travelfy now. They're giving you the same access to those you know, cell towers that the big three carriers use to make sure that you always get the, the strongest or the fastest service. And you know, of course, typically companies that do this, they're basically reselling the data plans. Typically the, the price points of those data plans are not very friendly and just not cost effective to use. You know, WineGuard charges $59 for 10 gigabytes of data. Now compare that to Travelfy, they charge $69 for 50 gigabytes. So that's five times the amount of data that WineGuard offers for just $10 more. Or consider Travelfy doing an $89 plan for 100 gigabytes. So, you know, clearly Travelfy has done the research. Uh, if you look at their data plans, I think their costs are actually pretty reasonable considering all things. And you know, sure, you could probably go to the actual carrier of Verizon or AT&T, right? And get more gigabytes per dollar that you, you spend. But you know, all in all, considering what they're doing, I think their price points are, are pretty reasonable. And plus with Travelfy, you no longer need to carry around three separate physical SIM cards. 
The second thing that impresses me about the Travel 5 Journey XTR is that the actual router itself, it seems to be more robust than the WineGuard. And, you know, as I tested the Travel 5, it just seemed to me that the actual, the admin interface on the router, you know, clicking from page to page or option to option, it just seemed that things loaded a lot faster there. And I think that's due to the Journey XTR having a faster processor, more memory inside the, the actual router itself. And the third thing about the XTR that is so appealing to me, and I think this is what makes it so appealing to RVers, is that you don't have to cut another hole in the roof of your RV. You don't have to run any wires outside your RV. And you know, just to bring in another popular internet option today, it's, it's not like Starlink, where you then have to run a dish outside uh, with a, a clear view of the, the sky. And you know, the XTR, everything is built in to the actual device itself. It's got six different external antennas that attach directly to the device itself. And so I think naturally the question to raise is, you know, will the will the Journey XTR get reception and you know signal strength as good as the WineGuard or another similar device without having that, you know, separate antenna, you know, external to your to your RV on the roof there? That's the same question I had at least. And so uh, in just a moment I'm going to run through all the tests so we can attempt to answer that question. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to click that thumbs up button. I really appreciate that. Now the install, it's super easy, 100% DIY. You know, it's plug and play. I, uh, I mounted my Journey XTR inside the front of my fifth wheel, right inside the, the closet up front. And then the only plug or wire that you have to connect, it's the 120 volt AC adapter. And I actually have an inverter outlet that's conveniently located in my closet. And so I plugged it in directly there and then I just took some industrial Velcro and I mounted it right on the closet wall there. It does have some, some LEDs that flash. And so, you know, being in a closet like this, I'm not gonna see them flashing at nighttime when it's dark. And I mean, that is it for the install. That is all that's required. There's no cutting holes in your roof, no running additional wires. But as nice as it is to have all of those benefits that I just mentioned, if the Journey XTR doesn't perform as good or better, for example, than the wine guard in real world scenarios, then why bother with it, right? I mean, at the end of the day, as RVers, we not only want that fast and convenient internet, right? But we also want stable and reliable internet. And so in the remainder of the video, I'm going to test the Journey XTR against the wine guard, both in the 4G mode and then also the, the Wi-Fi repeating mode. And then I'm also going to test the XTR against my cell phone using my cell phone as a, a hotspot. And then I'll also compare the XTR's Wi-Fi repeating capability against my source Wi-Fi signal that I'm picking up directly off of the, the laptop. So basically I wanna give us an idea of how the XTR you know, actually performs in a real world scenario. So first up, we're gonna do the 4G speed test. And I'll mention that my WineGuard router, it's mounted just a few feet away from the Journey XTR, so they're very close to each other. And then both devices, they're basically gonna be connecting to the nearest Verizon cell tower for this first test. I'm also gonna keep my laptop here in the same position across the board. You know, basically I'm trying to keep everything the same like you should in an experiment except for the one variable which is the actual modem, the router itself, the Journey XTR versus the, the WineGuard. And so I'm gonna keep all that the same and then I'll be using the official speedtest.net for all the speed testing. All right, so I've connected my laptop here to the Journey XTR via Wi-Fi. And again, it's connected to the closest Verizon cell tower for this, this uh, 4G test here. So you can see it is pulling a pretty decent download speed there. It looks like we're gonna settle in the high 12s perhaps. Yeah, right at 12.24 on the, the download speed. And I should mention the location here where I'm running all these tests on my property. You know, we have fairly poor cell phone reception with all three of the big carriers. So it's not uncommon for me to have zero or one bars on my cell phone on the reception, which of course, you know, the signal strength on your phone is gonna be weaker than what a device like the XTR or the WineGuard can, can pull. 
So the point I'm trying to make is I think the tests you're seeing here are very realistic of you know being in a remote campsite where maybe your cell reception isn't that great to begin with. Okay, so with the XTR connected to Verizon, 12.24 megabytes per second download. Again, that's on the Journey XTR through Verizon. Now I've switched over my laptop to the connect to the WineGuards Wi-Fi. Again, we're connecting to Verizon. And it's also, of course, connected to the nearest Verizon tower as well, which, by the way, it shows an 84% signal strength, which is you know, pretty impressive given that my phone only has one bar on it. But it looks like we're going to be pretty similar here with the WineGuard through Verizon. It's going to finish right at 10.32 megabytes per second download. So again, 12.24 with the XTR, 10.32 with the WineGuard both connected to Verizon. Th that's pretty similar, uh, you know, just a little bit slower than the XTR. Uh, but really, I would expect the WineGuard to have an advantage, you know, because it has that external antenna on the roof of my RV. And yet here, the XTR went a little bit faster. So I think what this tells me is that the reception that the Journey XTR pulls in is as good, if not better, than what the wine guard is pulling in with the rooftop antenna since the XTR finished out a little bit faster than the, the wine guard. Next, I'm gonna repeat the same test, but this time I'm gonna compare the Journey XTR against my phone using my phone as a, as a hotspot. And you know, if you're like me, sometimes you just take your phone and use it as a hotspot when you're traveling. And usually that works pretty good for the most part as long as you've got a decent cell signal on your phone. And you know, the antenna inside of our phones, it's much smaller and so weaker and basically just doesn't pull in as strong of a, a signal sometimes. So sometimes I find myself at a campsite where I've got maybe one bar or zero bars on my, my phone and that's where I need something that can pull in a stronger signal. Thus using my phone as a hotspot just isn't an option. And so this is where I wanna find out if the Journeys XTR, if their built-in antenna setup is able to pull in a, a stronger cell reception compared to my phone as a hotspot, which in turn should lead to a, a faster speed in the end. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, where I'm doing these tests here on my property, all three of the, the big carriers have really poor reception, at least on my phone. And I've actually got AT&T on my, my phone here, and hopefully you can see that, but I just have one bar of service, and that's pretty typical. Usually I have one bar, none. So what I'm gonna do is see how the Journey XTR compares to using my phone as a hotspot over AT&T this time. So first I've turned my phone into a hotspot and then I've connected my laptop to the phone via Wi-Fi. Of course, I've got one bar of service through AT&T. And so we're gonna run that same test on speedtest.net. We'll see if it even works with one bar of service. It's definitely running a little bit slower. Okay, there we go. Oh wow, so we're getting three megs. This is more than I'm, I'm usually getting with one bar of service on my phone. Let's just see where it finishes out. Looks like it's gonna be just over three. Yeah, right at 3.23 megabytes per second download. So again, that's with AT&T using my phone as a hotspot connected over Wi-Fi. And you know, 3.23 megabytes per second, if we were back in the late 90s, you know, downloading MP3s over Napster, that might be a, a decent speed. But in today's economy, that's a pretty slow speed, tough to get work done. So now let me swap Wi-Fi. I'm going to connect back to the Journey XTR through my laptop here over Wi-Fi. I'm going to run the same test again, but this time I've connected the Journey XTR through AT&T. And so in theory, I should be connected to the exact same AT&T cell tower that my phone was using on the previous test. And then we're gonna run that same speedtest.net and see the, the difference there, okay? So here we go. We're connecting through AT&T, through the XTR. And yeah, right off the bat, you can say significantly more. We were at, uh, I think it was 3.23 megabytes per second on the hotspot through AT&T on my phone. And it looks like we're gonna be in the high 13s here. And actually 14.91 megabytes per second download. So again, that's on AT&T using the XTR uh, versus my phone is a hotspot connected to AT&T, only 3.23. So I mean, that's over four times faster, the, the speed there. So what that tells me is the XTR is pulling in a significantly stronger speed with its antenna setup 
compared to you know just using my phone as a as a hotspot. And so for me, that what that does is it gives me confidence if I'm at a remote campsite where maybe I only have you know zero or one bars on my phone here then I can rely and trust knowing that the XTR is going to pull in a significantly, you know, stronger speed and at least get me, you know, up and running. And again, that's without running any antenna whatsoever to the outside of my RV. So that's pretty impressive. All right, well, last 4G test that I'll run on the Journey XTR is connecting to 4G over T-Mobile. And, you know, that's the last of the big three carriers to test. And I'll just admit, I probably have the least experience with T-Mobile service in general. For me, that's typically the kind of the third backup carrier that I carry a SIM card with me when I go camping. And so I use that one the least. So I don't have another device uh, or data plan set up to test against the XTR over T-Mobile. But I thought it'd be interesting to at least see, you know, what kind of data speeds and, and uh, signal we get running the XTR on T-Mobile. And so I've gone into the interface for the XTR on the, the portal online and changed it so that it will pick up the T-Mobile signal for this next uh, test. And then of course I'm connecting my laptop again through Wi-Fi to the XTR. We'll go ahead and run that speedtest.net and see what kind of speeds we're getting over T-Mobile. And this one looks like it's taking a little bit longer there. This one's a little bit slower, and this is consistent with what I've been finding as I've, I've tested it over the last uh, you know couple weeks here. But let's see what it does on the upload because the download's pretty pathetic there. Yeah, 0.57 megabytes per second. That's pretty rough, but okay, yeah, notice this. This is the same what I've been getting on T-Mobile, a much faster upload speed. So what that tells me is I would guess that the T-Mobile tower that I'm connecting through to the, through the XTR, I would guess that the tower is congested perhaps, you know, and that's why that download speed is so slow and so pathetic. So I don't think that's normal. I think it's just my T-Mobile tower in this area. It's probably congested, but you know, like I said, the upload speed being at 13.38 going over that same, you know, wireless signal, that 4G signal tells me that that's probably the, the culprit of, as to why it's, it's slower on uh, T-Mobile there. All right, so overall 4G impressions on the XTR, you know, I would conclude that the XTR is picking up a cell signal as strong, if not better, with its own, you know, uh, antennas that are attached to the device compared to the WineGuard with the external antennas on the, the roof. I mean, it seems like the XTR is pulling in as strong, if not stronger, of a, of a signal there. Um, which, by the way, I don't think I pointed out that the antenna connectors on the XTR, they appear to be standard, which means I think you could probably connect an external antenna if you wanted to go outside your RV or put it by a window or something like that. Because those connectors are standard, I think you could do that. In fact, you could probably figure out a way to connect the XTR to the wine guard antenna on the roof because I think those connectors on the wine guard are pretty standardized as well. So maybe that's a possibility. But I mean, in the end, the XTR has great reception just out of the box. I don't know that you'll need to make any modifications like that to the XTR. I also like that the XTR is set up by default to keep that 4G connection alive, you know, pretty much all the time. And so you don't have to go in there and, and mess with it. Uh, I also like uh, that the data plans, like I mentioned before, the data plans from Travel Fi, they're, they're very reasonable. And I think for me personally, the one that I would probably end up using the most when I go on trips is the $49 for 25 gigs. I mean, for most of my trips in the RV, it's a week or less. And so I think that would be more than enough you know, data for me to, to get my work done off of. And then I also like with the XTR that I can choose between which of the big three carriers that I want to connect to. I mean, it is set up by default to just connect to the strongest signal and you don't have to mess with it at all. But I like the fact that, you know, I can go in there and change it to Verizon or AT&T, you know, whatever carrier seems to be the strongest. Maybe one day I'm camping in one spot where Verizon's the strongest. And then another day I'm camping in a spot where AT&T's stronger. So I can easily switch over from carrier to carrier. And that's again, mid cycle within a single data plan that you're buying through Travelfy. I mean, what other carrier can you do that with? I mean, if I was with Verizon doing a prepaid and I wanted to switch over to AT&T, then I've got to pay a separate data plan for AT&T, you know, in that same cycle. 
So the fact that I can easily switch over to a different carrier without having to pay a, a separate data plan, you know, mid-cycle, that's a huge advantage with the XTR. But next, I actually want to test the Wi-Fi repeater or the Wi-Fi extender functionality with the XTR. And, you know, for some, this may not be a feature that you use as much, but let's just say that you're, you're at a campground that has decent Wi-Fi. And you know, maybe you don't wanna take the time to connect all your individual devices in the RV to that campground's Wi-Fi. And so the beauty of having a, a Wi-Fi extender repeater is then you can just connect the router to the campground Wi-Fi and then it will repeat or you know, reproduce the Wi-Fi signal to all your devices in the RV. And so uh, you know, then they'll automatically connect and it'll just save you a lot of time. And this is probably a good time for me to mention just a few disclaimers about Wi-Fi extenders and Wi-Fi repeaters. You know, there's, there's really so many variables involved there when you're trying to reproduce a wireless signal and do it wirelessly. And so if you haven't had good success using a Wi-Fi repeater, uh, it could be that your campground's Wi-Fi is the culprit ultimately, right? You know, maybe the campground doesn't have good quality of service set up, or maybe it's just a weak Wi-Fi signal to begin with. Maybe there's just too many other campers on the campground Wi-Fi and they're, you know, hogging the bandwidth streaming or something like that. And so I say all that because I've found that the, the free Wi-Fi that's offered at a lot of campgrounds, it leaves a lot to be desired. So it really just depends on where you're staying though. I'll be running these tests right here on my property again, and I've got really great Wi-Fi here, really solid high-speed uh, internet connection behind it. Usually I'm over 400 megabytes per second over a five gigahertz Wi-Fi connection, and then about uh, 20 megabytes or so over a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection. And I'll talk about that more in depth in, in just a little bit, but those are the raw speeds that I get when I connect my laptop here directly to my, my Wi-Fi here on the property. Again, in this exact same position here, so I'm trying to keep everything the same, but I do say all that up front because the results that you're about to see here on my property are probably more you know, ideal circumstances and you know, we may not get the same results at a campground depending on the Wi-Fi there. But with that, first I'm going to test the WineGuard in the Wi-Fi repeater mode. So right now the WineGuard is repeating my Wi-Fi here on the property and then I've got my laptop connected to the WineGuard. And so we're gonna run that same speedtest.net and while that's getting started, I'll just mention that the WineGuard only supports the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi band. And uh, we'll talk about that in just a little bit here, but that is the slower of the two bands, of course. But you can see the WineGuard is pulling a, it looks like 11.2 11 11 megabytes per second download. So that's pretty good. And uh, like I was saying, it only supports the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi band, whereas the TravelFi can do both the 2.4 and the five gigahertz. But for the, the next test to keep it apples to apples, I've got my laptop connected to the Journey XTR, which is repeating the Wi-Fi on my property here. And it looks like we're gonna be closer to oh, a little bit faster than the, the WineGuard, it looks like. So 12.2. 12.73 megabytes per second. So, so not bad. You know, the WineGuard was 11.2, uh, 11.2 versus here we're getting 12.73 megabytes per second on the XTR. So it's a, a little bit faster, but you know, pretty similar overall. And remember, the the source Wi-Fi. When I connect my laptop directly to the Wi-Fi here on my property. Oh, on that uh, 2.4 gigahertz band, I'm getting about 20 megabytes per second or so. And so both the WineGuard and the XTR retained about 60% or so of the, the source Wi-Fi in the repeater mode, which, you know, considering all things is pretty decent. But next for the really fun test, this one's just gonna be showing off basically, I'm going to test the Journey XTR repeating my five gigahertz Wi-Fi network here on the, the property, which you probably know a five gigahertz Wi-Fi network, it's able to produce a much faster signal. However, that signal, the strength of it is weaker, so it doesn't go quite as far. So you have to be a little bit closer to your access point, your, your wireless router in order for the five gigahertz to work to begin with. And you know, like I said before, the WineGuard only offers the ability to repeat a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, whereas the Journey XTR can do the, the five gigahertz. 
And so we should see a real significant you know, difference in, in speed here. Let's run the speed test again. So I've got the XTR repeating my five gigahertz network. I've got the laptop connected to the XTR and we'll go ahead and run the speedtest.net here. All right, so it is connecting and we should see a lot faster. Yeah, so we're up in the 70s so far. Oh, wow, 80s, okay, 84. Let's see how high it actually goes here. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right, so we are 86.79 megabytes per second download. Now remember, I'm when I connect directly to that same source network on my property, I'm at over 400. So I mean, it is only reproducing it and we're getting a speed of 86.79, but still that's a significantly faster speed. I mean, if you're at a campsite somewhere and they have a five gigahertz network that you can connect to and you're close enough, you know, having a speed like that, 86, you know, megabytes per second could make a big difference, especially if you're trying to, you know, stream videos or do some video conferencing over the Wi-Fi. So that could really be a, a big difference there. And it really gives, I think, the XTR an advantage over the, the WineGuard. So let me summarize my overall Wi-Fi sender or Wi-Fi repeating impressions with the Journey XTR. You know, we saw firsthand that when we compared the XTR repeating versus the WineGuard repeating, they were about the same. The XTR was a little bit faster at that 12.7 versus the 11.2 on the, the WineGuard. But like we saw when I did the five gigahertz mode repeating on that on that XTR, I mean, that's when we're gonna see that considerable advantage in the speed. It was right there around that 86 uh, megabytes per, per second. So again, huge pro when it comes to the Journey XTR, you know, really makes a big difference there. And I'll just mention that when I talked to the TravelFi team about the Wi-Fi repeater speeds, they told me that they're actually working to improve the current Wi-Fi extender speed and working to provide a, a future firmware update. But you know, all things considered, the XTR was able to keep up with the WineGuard and really exceed it, uh, definitely with the five gigahertz network. So in my opinion, when it comes to the world of you know, Wi-Fi repeaters, Wi-Fi extenders, the XTR does a pretty good job. All right, well, for me, I started out the video asking the question, is the TravelFi Journey XTR, you know, is it as good or better than the WineGuard, especially when it comes to actual real world performance? And I think we saw that, yes, you know, the, the XTR not only matches the WineGuard in terms of the speed, but it, it basically exceeds it in some cases, especially with that five gigahertz uh, you know, Wi-Fi option. Then secondly, I'd say that I have tinkered quite a bit with the Journey XTR a lot over the last two weeks, you know, as far as the admin interface, uh, setting things up and switching around and whatnot. And I would say that the XTR, to me, it seems like it has a much more robust, you know, core router, uh, probably a faster processor, more memory, such that the software that's running on the XTR on that interface it, it just doesn't seem to get bogged down and sluggish like my experience has been with the, the WineGuard. And so purely from a performance standpoint, I have a lot more confidence in the Journey XTR. But beyond the actual performance, which is impressive, you know, the XTR, I think it has some really great selling points, in my opinion, that make it a really great option for RVers. And of course, the biggest one is that virtual SIM. You know, you've got access to the three major carriers. And for me, that means I don't need to carry around three separate SIM cards and then manage three separate prepaid data plans everywhere I go. You know, now I can just work with TravelFi and I get those same benefits essentially. Another huge benefit with the XTR is that you don't need to drill a hole in the roof of your RV. You don't need another intrusion in your roof for the Journey XTR. And it seems like the antenna setup on the XTR, the built-in antennas that are attached to the device, get as good of a signal, if not better, than the WineGuard with its you know, external antennas on the, the roof. And then the last big pro in my mind is really the, the price point, you know, and I'm not talking about just the monthly 4G access plans. I think those are reasonable and really competitive, but also the actual cost, the upfront cost of the device itself, you know, it's right around $300. And, uh, you know, some of the alternatives out there, they're double that cost upfront. Well, what about any cons with the Journey XTR? You know, as I test devices, I always want to give you an unbiased perspective. And the main con that I can think of is that the XTR, as I've mentioned before, has a much more robust router. And so 
the admin interface where you set all the settings and get everything set up, it's far more robust than the, the WineGuard. You know, the WineGuard is a very stripped down interface, very simple. Whereas the XTR, I'd say it's, it's almost more similar to a router that you might have in your house, you know, with all the options and the settings uh, in that admin interface. And so the one con that I can think of is in a way, the Journey XTR's user interface, you know, the admin console, uh, where you're gonna set everything up, it's, it's a bit more complex than the, the WineGuard. It's not glitchy. I'm just saying there might be a, a slight learning curve, you know, as you get used to the Journey XTR, you know, especially the process for switching between 4G as your internet source over to the, the Wi-Fi repeater and such. But again, as I mentioned before, the TravelFi team can always release firmware updates in the future that can make that UI a little more streamlined. And, you know, just in my interactions, I'll say this, uh, in my interactions with the TravelFi team, they seem very interested in improving their, their product and making it better, you know, listening to the customer in the end. And then the only other con that I can think of with the XTR is that it actually comes with a 120 volt AC adapter uh, by default. And so if you want a boondock in your RV and you only have access to 12 volt power, that could be an issue for you. However, I will say I checked the power specs on the, the back or the bottom of the router, and it actually is native 12 volt. And so you could just get an appropriate 12 volt power supply and you know still use the XTR while boondocking over 12 volt. Otherwise, if you have an inverter like I do, and that's where I plugged into, then you know it's no issues. So my final thoughts on this device on the TravelFi Journey XTR. I'll just say first that I can see now why Brinkley RV and Riverstone RV have picked it as OEM equipment in their, their units. I know for me personally, it's definitely gonna be my go-to router over the, the WineGuard. You know, the XTR just offers a lot more flexibility, especially on the, the 4G service side. So I plan to use it as my primary source of internet moving forward and you know really put it through its paces long-term. So. Perhaps I can come back in the future with a, a long-term update and maybe some tips and tricks on the more technical side with the unit after I use it a little bit more. But I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the XTR so far. I wanna say a special thanks to TravelFi for sending me the device to test. And if you have any questions about the test that I ran in today's video, definitely drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think. But as always, thanks for watching.